I think there's something you should know about me. I just happen to... Hey Aussie Gamers and honorary Aussie Gamers from around the world, welcome to episode 95. Today is Friday the 18th of September 2015 and you're listening to the Aussie Gamers Express podcast, the podcast that recorded <laughs> the podcast that's recorded before a live audience of ants. I am your host Luke One and joining me this week is my good friend Sean aka Thorncliffe. How are you mate? I'm I'm really good today, actually. That's lovely. Let me see if I can get through the rest of this intro with uh, not so many errors. Uh, also joining us this week is our other great friend, Red. How are you? Good, thanks, man. We've got, like, sun here in Tasmania, and it's kind of put me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> it's <laughs> normally the Arctic down there, isn't it? Yeah, that's why we're... <laughs> you got to love it, or you got to... You either love it or hate it, and if you hate it, get out. If you love yeah. it, stay. What 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 temperature are you used to down there? Oh, twelve to fifteen. And what are, what do you what do you got today? Twenty. Twenty. <laughs> Ooh. Yep. Global warming, maybe. All right. Before we start this week, here's the show in preview. First up, game talk. After that, we'll go into the news. And in this week's news, we've got Metal Gear Online release date, Vita app closures, Dark Souls three beta lottery. Destiny's The Taken King changes for the worse, Xbox 360 system update, and Assassin's Creed Syndicate DLC. After that, what's that sound? Then Gaming University, and this week Gaming University will be a mixed bag of nuts. Which nuts? These nuts. (laughs) Good. (laughs) And Red will bring the show home with a shout. And first up, let's go game talk. Sean. What have I been doing? I don't know. Well, uh, Forza 6 came out this week. It did. So, on the Xbox One exclusive, and I've had a ball playing it. It's really good. The graphics look sensational. Uh, The extra new new stuff, the new tweaks that they've put in the game, it's it's really, really taken my fancy. So, what what part of it are you playing most? Uh... Bathurst. <laughs> yeah, Mount Panorama. Uh, I've played a, a bit of the, the campaign, so I've been running through that. The difficulty's pumped up a fair bit in that this year. It's uh, think? a lot more difficult from from what I remember from Forza 5, where you had to get in the top three, and you kind of just breezed it in. Uh, now, with the, the driver tars and a lot of the other stuff in there, it's it's knocked up the difficulty a fair bit and then you add in the the new weather elements and stuff that they put in and you know it's, it's become quite challenging and I, i'm enjoying that but it had the driver tires last year yeah but they just didn't seem so spastic last time they're just really aggressive and all that but in saying that as well there is a new uh setting here that you can turn the aggression of the driver tires off so I was yeah. finding I'd, I'd go in, I'd, I'd, I'd driving around, and nine times out of ten, I'd go into the corner, perfect line, and, and I'd get taken out by a driver tar, and that started getting really old really quick. Yeah. And, yeah, you're, you're it, it seems like it's... all the cars on there are driver tars, and, yeah, it can, can get quite annoying. But yeah, but you're saying that it's easy, and you can turn the difficulty up. It was easy. It's, it's, this year, is, it's, it's a bit challenging now, so... Yeah, because uh, I, I was playing, this is on Forza 6, and I, I found it too easy on the standard setting. I had to bump it up to give myself a bit of a challenge. Yeah. It gives you extra credits and XP and all that as well. But, uh, yeah, I got a little bit bored with it early on. I thought, I'm just smashing them. Like, I've got a lap or two to myself usually where I'm just way out ahead. It even gets to the point where I start to see the last car. So I, I bumped it up and made it a little bit more challenging because it was too easy. Yeah, you're a lot better than, at it than I am, though. <laughs> well, maybe, but it's. I, I think that's probably not not where the real difficulty is. I think that's in the time trials with your mates. That's where the hard part comes. Yeah. So yeah, I've been smashing out uh, Bathurst as as well, and 
trying to put yeah, down the, the best uh, time. rivals. So there's yeah. a, a competition going with that at the moment through Xbox to get your your gamer tag on the side of the Xbox One car and on the track at Mount Panorama as well. Mm. So uh, all you need to do is play the rivals, and it's, it's a randomly selected uh, winners out of that. So and you know, you know, last year at the EB Games Expo, how they had the Xbox One car. Yeah. And on the on the bonnet, it had all the Xbox uh, gamer tags. Yeah, they're doing that again. So oh, awesome! So the if you're uh, you're into it and you're playing it, there's a chance that you could get your your uh, gamer tag printed on the the bonnet of the new uh, Xbox One V8 Supercar. So I'll be uh, taking a, a look at that car once it comes out to see if I'm on there. That'll be awesome. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to have it again this year at the the expo, or one one of the similar ones there. I'm well, guessing that they I would. So. I think uh, so. Yeah. It was it was a mm. big draw card last year. I thought it was really cool. Got a few people taking photos with it and that, so that's cool. Yeah, uh, and I got the the drivers as well, so we got to meet the drivers last year. Yeah, yeah. And so. got the the shirt for the, the Xbox One racing. So especially this cool. year where they've got the the big uh, partnership with the V8 Supercar, so. I'd imagine mm. they'd probably have a big presence at the expo because of that specifically as yeah. well, and possibly with Mark Scape as well. Because I remember when the we went uh, two years ago to the expo, they had Mark Scape come out and introduce uh, Forza Five, and did, yeah. Bathurst was going to be in it. So he's played a big role in this one again this year with uh, announcing doing the track announcements for Bathurst. So uh, he might be be coming along to that as well. Yeah, cool. Uh, so- I Next think my time, hang on, I... quickly, quickly, you, I think my time's uh, 2 minutes 17, I think I got it down to, in the the, in the, the V8 supercar, the Falcon. Yeah. What, what's your time? 2.45 at the moment, Ooh, but uh, I'll be man. getting on to that in a, in a second. Yep. Uh, the weather, how are you finding the, the new weather system in it, like the rain especially? Yeah, it's tops. I reckon it's, it's tops. It makes it bloody hard. Yeah, especially the big good. puddles and like your your distance and your uh, your view is uh, obstructed by the rain. And while actually trying to dodge the other cars and make the corners right, you've also got to watch out for the uh, the puddles of water. Yeah, you'll, you'll get that hydroplaning thing. Yeah, what, what view yeah. do you use? Uh, I use bonnet. Yeah, same. Yeah, yeah. so that's a bit forgiving because you don't have the water all over the the windscreen, but you do get a bit on the camera though. Mm. And I was uh, playing it a bit. I did a couple of laps around Bathurst from the in-car view. Yep. Just to, to see what it was like. And just with the graphics and stuff inside that, it, you get with that inside car view, it's a lot more difficult because you do get that big blind spots mm, yep. while you're, you're moving around and that. And also, as you come up across the, the top of the mountain uh, in a McPhillamy, and I noticed the sun had hit, yeah? But a really cool thing that the in the graphics is that the reflection of the dashboard actually goes into the the windscreen yeah so that was pretty cool and the the way that the sun hits you and and stuff like that uh also probably it's probably a good thing but the worst thing i found was uh when you come down conrod straight into the chase if you don't hit the chase right in fours of five you could kind of knock off the track a little bit and be able to correct yourself onto to go into the cutting Mm. But this time they put two tire walls on yeah, the side of they, the cutting. Is that accurate to the real track? I think so. Yeah, I, pro- I think it probably yeah. would be. They've probably mm. put that in there. Um, yeah. Probably to just slow people down so they don't. If they they do fail into the uh, into the chase, that they're not yeah. not just wiping out cars on the uh, on the other side. Well, they've had that a, a few years ago. I think it was that uh, John Bow came into the cat- into the chase and misjudged it, and actually ended up rolling his car. Yeah, he rolled off. over, didn't Had he? Had to cut him out of the roof. Yeah, mm. um, walked away from it though. Good old Bow. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, that was the thing. So yeah, you've got to be really careful coming into the cutting now. Uh, the the new stuff that's in there. So I think it was is it Forza Horizon two that they had the spinning the spins for? Yeah, yeah, they yeah, had that. So little... that Wind yeah, thing. they've introduced that into into Forza Six. So every time you level up with your driver, now uh, you get a free spin. So it could be anything from like five thousand credits up to like a major prize, which could be like a Bugatti Veyron or a million credits. Or oh, I've um, hit those a couple of times, man. Those big ones. Yeah. Have you yet? No, not yet. I have hit the middle prize three times. One, the oh, first wow. time, the first time was a million credits. 
The second yeah. time was a $1.5 million car. Can't even remember what it was, some bizarre thing. Uh, and then yeah. the third time it was another, like, uh, I think a $500,000 car. Oh, I've wow. got some good shit out of that that spin. It's awesome. Yeah. No, that was was pretty cool. I haven't got it yet. I think I, I got one car that I already had, so they gave me $25,000 credit for it. Uh, I won a, a, a Jag, and I think I got credits on another one. So uh, then the mods. So there's the, the mods now yep. for your car. So at the start of every race now, you can actually buy... Uh, they're like burn cards, and there'll be a mixture on there. There can be permanent mods, or there can be one-time burn card mods, and you've got three slots that you can, can put them in and, and choose them at the start of every race. So they can be anything from like a extra grip, uh, which can be a permanent add to your, your car. Uh, burn cards that I've got are like uh, advancements on your place on the grid, or uh, double XP for a race. Or Do you know extra why those those XP things are good? For perfect drafting or, or something along those lines. So, those those mods. And, do you know what? The, like they're really helpful for players that aren't so mechanically minded, like yourself and me. Uh, yeah. Because there still has like all the massive, you know, rev head petrol freak sort of uh, tuning that you can do to the cars. But I end up just making the car like a piece of shit and all that sort of stuff so i tend to not touch that stuff but you can still mm. go and mod your car without having yeah. all that so I, it gives you that a little bit more of an arcadey element to it rather than just being pure sim which so it, it's accessible for more people i think that's a really good thing about it yeah and as you say yeah i've got absolutely no idea about the insides of a car so i'm not really good with that either and i do enjoy using the mods because yeah. Hey, have you so saved up? That. Have you saved up and bought one of those V8 supercars yet? No, not yet. Yes, yeah, so because because I won that million dollars early on, I bought the V8 <coughs> supercar, which means mm-hmm. every time that I do those rivals and and yep. just do the um, the what do you call them the time trials, I'm getting XP and money for doing that because I own the car rather than renting it. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's a big thing. Uh, yeah, I did a couple of just like the free play ones around Bathurst in the, like the Jag that I own and I was getting XP for it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, that, that's that's really handy if you're doing that because you are, are playing like your time trials and that and you do are getting XP as well whilst doing it. I actually got a, a Rivals challenge today from uh, Phil Spencer. Ooh. Yeah, so he challenge accepted. Yeah, so he sent out one, and it was with a Formula One car around the track, and that was the first time I ever driven a, a Formula One car. And oh my god, those things are lightning quick. Yeah, and stop on a dime too, but they'll they'll bite you if you press the buttons too hard. So that's yeah. cool that they're sending out those rivals so you can try and beat Phil Spencer and probably some of the other guys from uh, from Microsoft, which was pretty nut, pretty uh, pretty nice. Yeah. Uh, also, the the thing that I got was. The haptic feedback. Mm, yeah, that helps. Yeah. So it was first introduced in Forza 5, and basically you're getting a f- the full feel of your car through the triggers and the, the vibration settings in your controller. So if you, you start to slip off or, or get a bit of slip on your tyres or something like that, there you can actually feel it in your, your controller, which is really good. Mm. Well, I, I, I must yeah. say that it's the best Forza, and I, I would, in, in totally my opinion, but I think it's the best motorsports game that you can get on a console today. It's my yeah, opinion. Yeah, 100%. Cool. 100%. If, if you're a fan of racing games, then Xbox is the place to be. What do you reckon, so, Red? What do you think of it? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> PlayStation fanboy. <laughs> Oh, we'll get you into the Xbox one day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, that's the thing. Like, look, Polyphony really have some work to do if they're going to come anywhere near this. Yeah, with um, yeah, Gran Turismo. Turismo yeah, because it's, it's really is going to take a lot. You know, I one thing that, that Gran Turismo does that a lot of people don't like, but I do, is the licensing. Yeah, I don't so, mind that. Oh, that. That's something that I wouldn't mind seeing in Forza. But... You know, they've got, they've got so many other things going on that, uh, yeah, it really, really doesn't need it. All right, uh, cool. 
What else yeah. have you been playing, Sean? Uh, why I haven't been playing so much Forza is I got addicted to Ice this week. I mean, no, I got addicted to Metal Gear Solid Five. Same symptoms, but right? Yeah, same symptoms, very much so. Yeah, so, so you started uh, playing uh, that. What do you think? I actually had absolutely no intentions of buying Metal Gear Solid Five. I wasn't the biggest fan of them when I was younger and really didn't see see it as a as a game that I'd like. I, I hadn't even I haven't even played through the the free one that was on Not Ground um, Zeroes. Yeah, Ground Zeroes. That would have been right up your I alley. It's twenty it on minutes. And just just put it in and had a look and kinda went, uh, no, I can't really do it. But uh yeah, I got Metal Gear Solid Five and absolutely amazing this is is topping everything that i've played this year it's so good it's the as you were saying last week luke the um they're usually games that you, you try and breeze through with uh playing it luke luke mode kind of thing but i'm not even doing that i i'm doing all the side missions i'm doing it all i've only finished the first half of afghanistan because i've been doing all the the side missions through it as well and really enjoying it it's um how do i put it it's one of those ones that i i sneak around a lot in like like you would with the hitman and kind of plan out where you're going to go and and who you're going to take out and uh most of the time i'll go radio I'm, I'm just about to get into this area i've i've tranked these two guys uh right now there's my, my target i need to go after and I'll open a door and somebody will be inside or something like that there and then all of a sudden it bring and the the alarm goes off and and it just starts going nuts and I'm like looks like we're going loud <laughs> pull the machine gun out and just start shooting everyone but yeah, uh, true, uh, it's just, just just sometimes great. I'm happy when the alarm goes off or when they call for backup because it, it's fun to just absolutely annihilate everyone I don't mind doing that every yeah. now and then mm, I got an e in one of the the missions. <laughs> oh, that's easy to do early on. Yeah, a rank E. But it's one of those things is that, you know, like I haven't met who's the Whisper... Oh, what's her name? The <laughs> chick? Shh, so I haven't even met <laughs> Whisper? Silent? <laughs> Silent. <laughs> Quiet is her name. Quiet, yeah, something like that, yeah. I haven't even met her yet. Big My dog's McGee. still a puppy. All I've got is the horse at the moment. And... Yeah, it's, I'm just enjoying it, really, really enjoying it. I can sit down and I think I've put in 20 hours in three days and I couldn't tell you the last game I did that on. Wow, that's like nearly half of what I've done. I think I've, I've clocked about 50 hours. Yeah. Top effort. Yeah, Top. so just just loving it. It's, Is that I, about I it? Stress. What, what, I, spent probably, I spent probably 30 hours in Afghanistan before actually progressing past there anyway so yeah. it's fun to get there well that's the it. Like it. I, i'm sitting there and i'm looking at it and i'm going oh should i progress with the the missions or should i just do a couple of sides and uh i guess that point where i'm like you know what i'm going to go in and do this mission and you know what one of them the other day took me over two hours to do the mission and then i'm like oh, okay I'll, I'll just do a couple of sides because i don't know how long i'll be playing for and then one hour playing turns into four hours playing and you just keep going and it's just i can't yeah, put it down the time it's, just flies the amount of times where i've started playing it at like nine o'clock or whatever and then all of a sudden one of me got one of the guys playing with us like let's say uh nico or weeksy will be like all right i'm going to bed i'm like what and i look at the clock and it's like 11 or midnight I'm like shit yeah. <laughs> where did that time go i've only done the one mission <laughs> mm. Yeah, and it's, it's weird with mine, and, and you've got a similar roster, Luke. Like, I've got four days on and, and four days off, and the four days off that I do, like, I've got family stuff to do and all that kind of stuff, but then there's, there's always one day that I kind of go, you know what, this is my relax day, and I'm just going to gonna sit here and do nothing kind of thing. And, yeah, that was consumed by Metal Gear Solid. Nice. Oh, so well, there's a, a good testimony to a great game. Uh, yeah. Anything else did you play? No, no, that's it. That's my two. <laughs> nice. nice. No, they're good games, man. Red, what about yourself? Oh, I, did, wait, I just oh. want to add something. I've been having massive PSN issues this week as well. Yeah, you have. I've been talking to a guy at work that's had similar issues to you. I think it's uh, de like 
per account because it's not everyone. I've had none. Yeah, it's a it's, it's a server issue. It's like uh, everything I've looked at online, and they say oh, redo your your router, uh, like reset it, and uh, okay. I've reset my console numerous times. And the issue is, I can't bring up my friends list. I can't get into chats. And every afternoon at about five five thirty, uh, when I've been playing Metal Gear Solid, it will just flick off and say, "Oh, I logged out of." logged out of the online. Yeah, well, that mm. happens to me in Metal Gear all the time. I think that's a Metal Gear yeah. thing. That's because mm. the PSN's and... got to support Zesty's e- ego. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then it, it just it, it just stop, and I'm like, oh, okay, and oh, when it says redo your, your router and reset the console and that, I'm looking at it, and I'm going, well, no, because I turn the Xbox on and everything's working fine on the Xbox. It's not the router. It's not like my phone's connected up to the the Wi-Fi. My PC is, and everything's running smoothly except for the PlayStation. So apparently there there is a a work happening on it at the moment. They're working on it, but it's yet to be seen. If anything, is it still like that for you? Or yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah. Because when I send messages through to you guys, going, oh, can you invite me to the chat party to see if it works that way? But yeah, still no. It won't won't let me join the chat party. Won't let me start one. It's just ridiculous. Mm, mm. No good. All right, Red. What do you got? Just my highlight of the week, Phantom Pain. Just to continue on with that really quickly was completing the initial phase, the initial chapter, if you will, up to episode thirty-one. Yep. And that closed out really, really fantastically. I yeah, it was just, good. I finished yeah. it this week as well. It's just brilliant. What a game! And um, a lot of a lot of us have have the same opinion as you don't feel like the game's ended there. You you just don't feel content that uh, you've done enough. So I'm pimping out Mother Base. Uh, I'm getting uh, a little bit better at the forward operating base and infiltrating and doing the sneakies on other people's base. That's getting a bit easier now. I understand what I've got to do. <laughs> it just kind of chucks you in the deep end, sort of thing, and get here. Oh, all right, <laughs> but it's basically just like another mission, another level. You got to sneak, mark, hijack, Fulton people out, and just yeah, steal their supplies. So that's that's been really really cool. Um, the Can I just ask OSP. a quick question there is it yeah. so how many chapters is there? Is it thirty one in the whole game? Uh, Fifty. Oh, okay. So when you say you, you finish thirty-one, uh, do they give you what what happens after thirty-one? So, so that's, that's basically from what I can gather. That's the main narrative. Thirty-one. Okay. Um, after that, you explore your there's side missions where you explore little bits and pieces of the story of different characters you've met along the way, plus your OSP missions, which stands for on-site procurement. So you go in with nothing, no buddies, no weapons, no no and anything whatsoever. And you also get harder missions that Luke was telling me about. I've got one on my list. I haven't tried it yet. Like, no reflex, and if you get spotted, game over, start again sort of thing. So okay. I'd say the last 19, 19 uh, main story missions are made up of those harder ones, plus a spattering of, like, Quiet and other characters that you'll meet along the way. Because I've done a couple of those main ones last night, and... They're just bigger, badder, and harder sort of thing. It just progresses with uh, progresses with the difficulty. Uh, awesome. Ramps right up, really. The difficulty level ramps right up after that because the hard missions are just replays of ones you've already done before. So although you kind of know what you're doing, you'll feel um, accustomed to it. But, yeah, with the, the heightened security and, yeah, not having everything that you're used to being using for the pe- previous 50, 60, 70 hours... Um, yeah. yeah, it really throws a spanner in the work. So, in a good way. Don't get me wrong; it just makes you play a little bit differently, and um, that just showcases the quality of the game. And um, yeah, I love it. I've put, I ticked just over eighty hours last night. <sighs> yeah, because I spoke to uh, Rep from me the other day when I was uh, talking online with him about it, and he was saying how uh, I, was, I said to him, "I've gone, oh, geez, I just got an E in that that level as my rank, you know." And he's like, "Oh, you know, don't worry. Wait, once you get it." get all your, your other people in like quiet and uh, your dog and what like, DD and I just thought well he goes yeah it's going to get a lot easier for you to go back and replay those missions once uh, you've kind of got a feel for it and then you've got the better support 
Well, that's so, exactly right. And some of the because you get five, three, four, five, six different objectives. Like you got your main one or two, and then you have got all your optionals. Mm. You can't you can't do the optionals without upgrading your Fulton all the way. You know, and you're not going to get that in your first fifty hours or your first thirty or forty hours. The the full upgrade of the Fulton sort of thing. So yeah, because that's yeah, the other yeah. thing I really fully don't understand at the moment is the the whole home basing and the upgrades and all that kind of stuff. I I really it does a really good job of explaining more. it. Yeah, well, yeah. What you got to you got to get through probably. It becomes fully immersive and operational after mission twenty one. Oh, okay. So I'm you're building on it. Yeah, good to go. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it feeds it to you in bite sized pieces, but then after twenty one, you got full command of everything, and it's a game within itself. Like those FOBs and your mother base and and everything they're all a game within themselves like I've, i think i've got just a touch over 650 people back at mother base and you can go in and individualize their given tasks or their their areas of uh expertise and everything like that and just um, I started playing around with the roster a fair bit so yeah well as soon as you get accustomed with that a lot yeah. easier it's going to be later on when you bring in 20 30 40 people back in every time you jump on the helicopter so yeah and there's also that nifty R2 or R3 auto assign to send everyone to their most preferred location yeah. when you get too stuck. So, yeah, so the highlight, Phantom Pain, for me this week was completing it and feeling, yeah, wicked way to finish up that level 31. That was just, that's all I'm going to say. That was fucking sick. <laughs> um, I've invested probably three or four too many hours into the FIFA 16 demo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, every time I, I, I turn the PlayStation on and... Like, you, you, you gear yourself up, no pun, to, to play something like the Phantom Pain or whatnot, and then you go, oh, well, look, I'll, I'll chuck a couple of games through FIFA just to warm the controller up and imprint my ass on the cushion, and, <laughs> and then you find yourself playing three, four, five games. It's fantastic. As, a, as far as a demo is concerned, I don't think I've played a demo quite as much as I have this one. So um, they've done a good thing and released it on the store for us all to grab because um, they're at least going to get an extra sale out of it with me eventually i probably won't have it release day but um it's something i will own because i uh, i've always got you there to play with luke because you you might likely be getting it as well yes yeah i do want to get it yep yeah uh also this week rocket league i um now they've after the update they've added a few new things which we touched on last week and i've uh, just been doing ranked play with the new uh, official season underway now and your wins and losses counting for something other than wins and losses in your stat column basically so yeah the same as with fifa you chuck it on all right yeah well five minute games i'll have two or three of those and then jump into something more serious so that's probably i played that probably every day also and last but not least um a game called flame over by oh, yeah. um a european mob called laughing jackal um how to explain it is kind of top down uh, we used isometric, used both sticks, um, and you put fires out, save uh, people and save cats and do little uh, objective-based missions within each level, and it's all time-based, so you finish the first level with four minutes in the bank, that's what you take into the next level and the next level, so it really makes it a lot harder to finish the game when you go, right, yo, well, I completed Chapter 1, now I'll jump into Chapter 2. You start with your five minutes and no power-ups, and uh yeah so you it kind of encourages you to do it all the way from um level one and being procedurally generated you can't kind of memorize where you got to go and what you got to get to save yourself time you kind of got to have a quick look at the map work it out and then yeah go and put the fires out <laughs> and it's hard yeah i played that a little bit and yeah it was t too hard for me to get into because it was it's just unforgiving because you put the fires out and the fire shoots out fireballs which start more spot fires. So you essentially start at one side of the room, put it all out. By the time you get to the other side of the room, the other side's on fire again. Did my head. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and the same with the electrical fires. You can't just put them out with the hose. You've got to put them out with the hose and then hit them with the extinguisher or or you will walk away unbeknown and it will start back up again also that way. So... Plan of attack, if anyone's listening and they're new to Flame Over or they've got it, 
find hit the map and go straight to the um go straight and turn the power off because then you won't have any more electrical fires to deal with because they're a bitch they really are <laughs> uh, basically you work on a life system with the hearts up in the top right corner and you've got a bar like a circle that goes around your character and um so basically the closer you get to a fire the hotter you'll get and once you reach 100 percent will you lose a life so basically, you've got to try and gauge. You've got to go in, put some out, back off, go back in. It's yeah, it's, a, it's a real uh, balance game, and that doesn't really make it any easier either. So it's quite uh, it well quite uh, it is 100% unforgiving. You know, it, it doesn't give you a leg up in any sort of situation. Like the time will run out, and that's not instant death, which I thought it was. So I was cracking the shits, but the Grim Reaper will chase you around. But once he touches you, no matter how many hearts you've got left, uh, she's game over. Yeah, it's just I think the the problem with me in that game is the 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 reward versus the difficulty doesn't mash up for me it's i don't think it's fun enough for me to put up with how hard it is does that make sense yeah yeah it does the only thing i will say that when you push through four five or six levels i think there's six levels per chapter once you push through to your fourth your fifth level and you're still alive and you've got a decent amount of time it starts feeding you a couple of power-ups here and there when you help out certain people in distress but getting there as i said with the procedurally generated levels i I can go in and i'll die level one all the time but then i'll get on a run and i'll do eight levels in a row sort of thing so it's it's a lot of luck and pain i never managed to finish one yeah i I think my best run i posted a pretty decent score i I think i've done eight or nine levels in a single run yeah, not even one. <laughs> yeah, guitar. So, um, I rage yeah, deleted stay, that game. Stay tuned. Uh, very soon, there will be my written thoughts will be up on our um, on our website also. So, That's you can find that game. at www.oddgameexpress.com. <laughs> That's Plug the first that game that I have ever rage deleted. I've rage quit a million you, times. But yeah. That's the first one I've rage deleted. <laughs> Get the fuck off! I my think I've done that to Rogue Legacy console. <laughs> you can fuck right off. Yeah, that's it. All right, that's so, your week, man. That's me. That's me, dude. All right, I'll go through what I've played. Obviously, Metal Gear Solid Five. I tried Tesla Grad and Super Time Force Ultra. Have you guys mm-hmm. tried those? Well, I tried the Grad. Super Time Force Ultra and had it on for about five minutes, saying, "Why the fuck am I playing this when I've got Metal Gear Solid?" <laughs> Yeah, I'd give it a go. It's the PlayStation Plus free games for the month. And look, Tesla Grad is its just a side-scrolling chasing game, isn't it? You're being chased after by all these big oath of blokes and you've got to run and sort of go through all the little um, obstacles that are in your way. Not a horrible game. It's not bad. It'd be good to play on hard, the Vita. I'm sorry. Yeah, it does get real hard. But I think Super Time Force Ultra is probably the better of the two games. That's a pretty neat game with the way it works. I, I like that idea. It's... Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that before, but essentially you can be your own co-op partner. So you'll go through with, say, one player, and you'll have, like, a machine gun, and you'll get killed. So what you do is you hit the rewind button, and the game rewinds a bit, and then you can bring in another character, and this one might have a shield or a sniper rifle, and then it plays, and what it'll do, it'll play out your replay from the previous character that died, it, it's recorded what you did so it'll play that and then you've got a control of the new character and you can work alongside your, your previous run through to, to go and, and kill whatever killed you and then once you pass that point that when you actually died the, the two characters intertwine and come back together and you, you're back as one character again you move on and you can do that quite a few times where it's I think up to three of you's working together and essentially you're playing with yourself but you've got two other characters and it's not AI it's your character that you played previously so it's pretty yeah, it's neat. pre-recorded game plan yeah it is it's it's I've never seen it before and it, it works quite well and it's it's good, a pretty good looking sort of pixel art style game so I played that for a little while but I just just enough to give it a try anyway that's all I've done with that one so that's it's a pretty pretty neat game I put a fair bit of time last night into Diablo 3. I've been um, just punching out some bounties. I just, I'm just i enjoying my new character, who's real powerful now, which is pretty cool. So uh, I did probably a handful of bounties. You know what, I, I don't know, Sean, you've probably done them that many times now. You know what you're doing. But some yeah. of the frustrations are the ones where you've got to kill the bosses. 
and it just takes me so long to work out how to get to the boss. Yeah. And I, I yeah. was trying to do the butcher. Now I happen. This happens every time I got to do the butcher one. I always get lost, and I can never find him. So I just gave up <laughs> on it. But yeah. uh, it, that's you know, it just reconfirmed how how well that game is. Uh, I really enjoyed playing that again last night. So I'll play that a little mm. bit more before the end of time, no doubt. Yeah, with the bounties as well. With those, uh, the ones that used to annoy, annoy me was like they drop you into like the. Um, Oh, whispering sands, and you'd be running through looking for a dungeon, and then you'd find the dungeon, and it's like kill everything on level two. So by the time you get down to level two, you've already spent twenty minutes in the bounty, and then there's other bounties where it's like go in and and just kill this one guy, and you you run straight and you, you find him. But other times you can be looking for him for half an hour because they do yeah kind of mix up where they. They place them sometimes, and especially the key wardens that we we used to have to chase. They'd oh, be wow, all in I different places. That. Yeah. Mm. How many times you fucking teleported in and out looking for the fucking key wardens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd run through. No, not here. <laughs> then you'd but, get one, and it'd never be the one you fucking wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really enjoyed playing that again last night. I'll probably want to play that again tonight. That's how much. I enjoy playing that one. We've got to finish uh, our hardcore. Yeah, we've got to get to that. Uh, I Am yeah. Bread. I've been playing I Am Bread again. It's a frustratingly hard game. but uh, Something about it will make you me like want to Surgeon keep Surgeon Simulator? No, Surgeon Simulator shit. Okay. No, that's, that's a ridiculous game, that one. This one's easier to control than Sur- Surgeon Simulator. Yeah. You've played Surgeon Simulator? Yes. That's a stupid name. That's hard to say as well. <laughs> so just, 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 just. You say that Surgeon Simulator is stupid <laughs> you're playing a game called I Am Bread. Yeah, but th- not the the idea. The The ideas are just as dumb as each other, but the controls yeah. are a little bit more realistic. You can't play Surgeon Simulator. No. I'll put it's it to made, you. I, it, it, it's made so that people can make stupid it, YouTube videos. Yeah, YouTube videos, it's yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Ridiculous, but I am bred. You can, you can, you can play it. It's playable. It's frustrating and hard, but it's still doable. That's what I like about it. Uh, I played Gianna Sisters Dream Runners as well. Uh, uh, Snoogans, he had a bit of trouble getting in uh, some online games. Me too. I haven't managed to do that. I've just been playing up against bots, so that's a bit of a shame there. But essentially, I don't know if you guys know. I doubt you guys would know anything about it because I think it was Xbox only. It was uh, uh, Rascals. On the Xbox, I enjoyed playing that one on the Xbox 360, and that, it's kind of the same as this. It was uh, basically a, a couch co-op racing game, but I think that was that that did it better, and it worked. It was online and stuff like that, so it is it is colourful and pretty, and, and works quite well for a couch co-op. But uh, other than that, it's a bit uh, bit disappointing, actually. Shame, shame. Uh, I think that covers. I think we've talked about all the games that I needed to talk about for this week. That's me. Anything to add before we go into the news? Uh, no. No, Red. No, I'm two weeks. Man. What's two weeks? Oh, EB Expo. EB Expo. EB Expo and Red's Red and Nikos is uh, doing their pilgrimage to Sydney. So mm-hmm. that'll be uh, that'll be a good, nice get together. And dare say there'll be a lot of coverage on our shenanigans. I can't wait. We our uh, what's going to be on it, Red? Is it going to be chicken nuggets and cheeseburgers? Or chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets and cheese on home brand pizzas and then Fruit Loops and ice cream. Yes, that's de- but separate. That's dessert. That's not going on the pizza. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. you actually thought the other day I was saying, it because you don't actually put that on the pizza, do you? And I'm like, oh, I could so fuck with you right now, but no. <laughs> yeah, because I was talking about that, and you go, and ice cream and Fruit Loops. I'm like, what? On the pizza? <laughs> what are you, a Ninja you Turtle? Wait, and see, wait to see the signs we're going to make for you at the airport. <laughs> I don't. I don't reckon the word "cunt" will go over too well before nah. after nah. fat. Oh, uh, okay. welcome, welcome back! <laughs> welcome back from rehab. I was just going to hold up a picture of simply red. <laughs> <laughs> Simple red. Oh man! Uh, well, oh, that's going to be no, some good wait. fun. That's yeah, only a couple of literal, weeks ago. Literally days. Yeah, tops. All right, then, let's go and do this week's news. (laughs) 
First up in the news, Metal Gear Online gets a release date. So I've seen video of this. Red, you were talking about it as well with me last night, and it yep. looks very promising. Oh, it, it does. does <laughs> it does. It does look like it's got quite a co-op feature to it, rather than just full-out sort of multiplayer. But deathmatch, yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be really good. I'm looking forward to that. And we've got to wait until the sixth of October. So we've got what three weeks. Yeah, that's all right. I still need still three weeks, weeks of Phantom Pain. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's I'm coming. Just uh, prepare to get uh, kicked out of this chat. But can you explain to me what Metal Gear Online is? It's multiplayer Metal Gear Solid. Oh, is it for the Phantom Pain? Is it? Yes. Yeah. 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 For the oh, on, it's... on the PS4 and that. Okay. Yeah, like you know, with uh, Grand Theft Auto Five, <laughs> how it didn't have the multiplayer, the online part on release. Yeah. Yeah, it came out like two weeks later. Same sort of thing here, but uh, 6th of October 2015. It's going to be free to download for everyone that owns Metal Gear Solid 5. So it's going to be on the PS4, and uh, you're going to be able to team up and take down um, objectives with your mates. Awesome. That yeah. sounds es- es- Essentially co-op Phantom Pain with yep. um, real-life adversarials instead yeah. of AIs. And you know, at the beginning of the Phantom Pain, when the Doctor said that he was going to change mm. your face... Yeah. You created your online character. That's what that is. Oh. Yeah, yeah I made uh, BJ Blaskovitz with a fucked up face, with a fucked up eye. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you, will, you will be able to use that one, or you can make a new one if you wish. And there will be females as well. I oh, know, Red, yeah. you're, you're going to make your female character ASAP, aren't you? Yeah, fuck that. I'll call it silent. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Shush. All right, so, yeah, yeah, about two and a half, three weeks. <laughs> What'd you say, Sean? That's a fake one. Silent. Woman called Silent? I don't think so. That's a fake woman. <laughs> All right, uh, who's next with news? Sean, I think. Sean. 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 Venus closing down Facebook support. Oh, yeah. So, oh, no. The, that's my number uh, one go-to app. A couple of months ago, they closed down their YouTube and the Maps app and also the Near Me app as well. So yeah. now Facebook's going to be removed from it. It's also being removed from the PlayStation 3. So they've actually removed the apps now from the stores already and it will be coming out soon that, uh, yeah, it'll be completely gone. Nobody uses so, them anyway, do they? Really? Yeah, well, is that... And on the PlayStation Surely TV, not. It's, it's going to be gone too. The thing that... Well, the only thing that I used it for, I never actually used Facebook on the thing, but I had it linked to my PS3. So, and when like you'd get trophies or something like that, there, it automatically like say, "Hey, uh, look at me! I I got a trophy on Facebook." Yeah. Uh, it's still going to be on the PS4, and the uh, the sharing captured video and all that kind of stuff is is not going to be affected on PlayStation 4. But yeah, they're just shutting it down now through uh, the the Vita and the, the PS3. So Seems like it's following suit with their game development for the Vita. Yeah, it is. Yeah, which is, is quite disgraceful in the the fact that it was going to be the next best thing to um, be a companion for the PS4. Considering what they cost as well. Oh, and the, yeah. the Vita has got so much capabilities too. It's a powerful little unit and they don't release yeah. games. Look, if you go to Japan, you'll see shelves and shelves full of games. It's just they don't make them for us. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Because I've seen that many um, posts on Reddit where people are saying, like they'll post up a picture of them in Japan saying, um, you know, I've just died and gone to Vita Heaven because there's heaps of games. Like most of them are those anime style uh, JRPGs. (laughs) But even if they release them here, I might start getting into some of them. Like, we're missing out because they're not making the western style first party games on the Vita they're just not releasing them here it's a bit piss weak mm. and, and would I be correct in saying that the monthly free games for the Vita are either ports or cross pla- uh, cross buy sort of cross platform ones yeah yeah that's yeah. right yep mm. yeah, and you know what like I, I love playing with the Vita just sitting there and, and chilling out and if somebody's watching the TV just Hooking into the Vita and and, and playing. Hmm. All right, cool. Uh, let's move on with Red. Your bit of news, please. 
Uh, Dark Souls 3 is uh, getting a beta in just as uh, stress test the network Saturday, October 17th to Monday, October 19th. Um, so registration is not quite open yet. I think that opens on the 19th of September, so tomorrow. This is Australian time. So when you're listening to this, you could go in and have a look. Yeah. Um, but it's a lottery, so no one's guaranteed. There's no pre-order this to get beta access. Like you just go in, you register your interest in it, and then um, you'd be randomly selected, which I think is pretty cool because I hate the whole pre-order to gain beta access sort of thing. Like I, I like that because you can put ten bucks on it, but I don't appreciate the incentive of like beta access for pre-order sort of thing. Like you've got to draw a line. Like you get maps or you get uh, skins or this or that, but beta access is kind of something that's uh, only a timed sort of incentive if you will so yeah. Uh, yeah not a whole lot of news on Dark Souls 3 hopefully well we, we should all sign up and hopefully one of us will get it and is it if I get it I'd probably give it to Weeksy <laughs> is it going to be like a a single player level or is it going to be an adversarial thing do you think I would assume it'd be say the first yeah level or so they're going to because the more prominent sort of multiplayer the aspect I've ran into with Souls personally is uh, helping your mate out yeah like ringing this ringing the bell jumping in yeah sort of thing so uh, that's prompted me to chuck Bloodborne back in and update today also in uh, lieu of the DLC coming out for that so we'll all jump on and register for that and hopefully one of us will get in because that'll be some pretty cool news to drop first hand on the page hmm, nice all right, next up, uh, The Taken King Kills Your Game. Now, Red, I know you're really keen to keep playing Destiny Year One because you <laughs> loved it so much. I know uh, you're... Um, no, I'm just joking. You fucking hate it. You just turned on my all, Xbox. Yeah, I played on my Xbox One. You turned all ex-girlfriend on that thing, man. <laughs> you were all in love at first, and then the uh, the honeymoon wore off, and then you fucking shit on its name. But anyway, <laughs> well, tell me about it. It's like being married. Now it's all repetition. I've got to look at her every day still, so I trade her in too. Oh, like good you don't believe that at all. Uh, but get this: this is a couple of things that are a bit dis disappointing to those that do like Destiny Year One, but don't have the coin or aren't going to, you know, fork out the seventy to a hundred dollars on the Taken King. Year one only Destiny players can still access the original story missions and raids. Story is used loosely, but they can't do heroic strikes or nightfalls anymore at all. Oh, oh that's terrible. And players without the Taken King can only run through the relatively useless level 20 Vanguard Legacy playlist. That's terrible. That's like buying Call of Duty, and when if you don't buy the bloody season pass, then you can no longer play multiplayer. You've only got campaign and zombies. Yeah. Now, with the actual multiplayer stuff, the Year 1 players are stuck with three types of PvP playlists only. So, Classic Free For All, Classic 3v3, which is Skirmish or Salvage, and Classic 6v6, Clash and Control. If you don't have the Taken King but you want to play one of those 3v3s or 636 modes, your only option is to pick a playlist and then just bail out every time you get a match that you don't want to play. You can't choose one of them individually. Oh, fuck, that's appalling. Yeah. So if you, if <laughs> I'm you sorry, you paid full it? retail for yeah, a game that's... and now you're having it taken off you. That's that's wrong. That some it's quite a strange uh, reference to make. But with the where where I got this news from, one of the commenters said that's like going to the shop and buying a couch, and then when they bring out the new couch that comes with new cushions, if you don't buy the new cushion, they rock up and take half the couch off you. Strange exactly. strange reference, but I understand where they're getting at. I don't think they should be allowed to do that. No, no, that's I smart. smell a lawsuit coming on. It's it doesn't sound legal. I mean, I don't know too much about the legalities behind all this sort of stuff, but and maybe it was in the fine print, you know, those things that we all agree <laughs> that to. That thing that you clicked accept on? Yeah, right. the thing that I told them that I'd read but hadn't. It's probably in there somewhere, who knows, but I, I don't like that. That Now, unless you keep up, and even unless you keep buying all the expansions, you're going to lose shit. Um, do you know at all if this was information was made public prior to the release of the Taken King. 
No, oh, I don't know. Uh, it's but, 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 but add its bare essentials without special or limited editions or anything. Destiny now costs two hundred dollars. If you started and you got the expansions as they come out, even yeah. when you could buy the two expansions for the slightly cheaper price, that was forty, say forty bucks, and seventy for this and a hundred for the original game. You're up at two hundred and ten dollars already, and so effectively your first hundred and fifty counts for fucking squat if you don't fork out this other seventy dollars. But this isn't the first time it's happened with Destiny because when the DLC came out last time with like House of Wolves and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, if, you're right. If there was like a weekly nightfall and it was one of the new maps, then all of the people that didn't have the DLC couldn't do it for that week. You had to wait until it was randomly picked one of the uh, original missions. If it wasn't one of them, you couldn't do it. You can't do it. You're locked out because you haven't paid for it. Mm. Paywalls. It's almost, it's almost discrimination. But now it's even worse to the point where you can't do them at all. Fuck. Mm. Yeah, it's looking looking quite grim. I think that's bad. Good bit of news, bro. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. All right, uh, Sean, what's your next bit? Uh, I've got the Xbox 360. It's got a, a system update uh, going on. And the reason why I'm, I'm really announcing this is because they've got a, a new feature coming in where you're going to get two gigabytes of cloud storage. Oh, yeah, as opposed to, what did that so, 500 or something? Yeah, uh, this is going to be really good for those with a the uh, backwards compatibility and stuff. So now that you'll be able to upload your, your save games from your 360 onto the cloud and download them on the Xbox One for your, your cross-play. So, Fantastic. Yeah, so that's, that's a, actually a really, really good really thing cool. coming out. You, yeah. could do, you could do that before, though. Yeah, but not with with that much space. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's helpful. But is that going to be shared between the two consoles? No, I think it's just, uh, just for your 360. Oh, just for the 360, because I'm not sure yeah. what the size of the Xbox One is. Yeah, uh, it's just good as well, because I'm guessing that when you're, you're using your your backwards compatibility as well, because it opens up in like the Xbox 360 hub, Yeah. It, it'd be uh, like with using the backwards compatibility, updating your, uh, your save file to the cloud, it'd still be going on that 500 megabyte or whatever. Yeah. Because it's updating from the 360 emulator. So mm -hmm. now having that more storage is just going to be quite helpful And so uh, as, as the more games come out for that backwards compatibility. Similar but off topic, the PlayStation Network's upping there soon to 10, isn't it? 10 gigs. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Mm, That'll that's be with 3.0. Yeah, cool. I can't wait for that to drop. That would be nice. Was it well, 10 gig or 50 gig? No, 10, man. No, 10. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's going up from yeah. 1 gig, I think it is, to 10. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's going to be good because a lot of times I'm, I'm having things is going. Your saved game wasn't updated to the cloud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, also, the, a couple other little things that they got going in this is uh, redeem codes from messages. So if you get a message through and you've got a code for a, a thing, you can actually click on it there and it'll actually redeem it straight to you. Oh, you like a hyperlink. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, activity feed. So you like, comment, and share all your your stuff through that. Uh, see what your friends are doing. You can now see what your friends are playing on the Xbox One and Windows 10 from the 360. Uh, yeah, see your money as well. So this is a, another neat little thing. It'll be good in the PlayStation Store, actually. So your Microsoft account balance will be shown when you're looking at the details of a game or when browsing the marketplace. Why it doesn't oh, how much do that? Nifty would that be? Uh, why it doesn't do it already is beyond me. That definitely needs to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's when you get to the point of, all right, I'm about to get this game, and you get in there, and you're 45 cent shorts, they can charge you an extra 10 fucking nicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had $2.60 on there one time, and that real boxing on the Vita. 261 or something. 261, and it would not not give it to me. I know. I want you... me to update with $10, and I'm like, you You were serious? upset on the podcast at the time and told us about it. It sucks, yeah. I know. And you know what's really annoying is that the US and the Canadian stores only require a minimum of $5 to top up. That's because it equals 10 Australian. That is 10 Australian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about right, but that's not fair. No, All right. none of it, yeah, no. Nice stuff for it, Red. Bring us home, boy. Right, just a little bit more controversy when it comes to... Uh, we are just talking about Destiny's DLC. Um, Ubisoft have come out and announced uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate's first batch of DLC. 
<laughs> Before I go into it, I think you summed it up perfectly last night. Luke, you go off. So basically, they're showcasing what they're going to give you for free when they fuck up this release. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only saving grace is it's uh, they're taking on the, the story of Jack the Ripper, and that would be cool. You know what I mean? It's uh, it's going to be set 20 years after the main events of the uh, the syndicate campaign, and it's going to feature Inspector Frederick Alberling of Scotland Yard, and you go on the hunt for Jack the Ripper. And if the couple of screenshots, whether they be concept or not, and the video that I've had a look at so far, it could be kind of creepy. And I think they're probably relying on people like myself. That's like, oh, Jack the Ripper. Now that'd be cool. Now I've got to go get Syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, yeah, Ubisoft and DLC and myself don't mix. But I'm I'm absolutely not letting myself get hyped up for Syndicate because of how I felt with Unity. It still sits there. It haunts me. One would have probably traded in, sold it, got rid of it. But I might jump on a week before Syndicate, throw 30 or 40 hours through the campaign of uh, Unity, finish it off. And if that leaves me feeling good enough, then I, I might look to acquire Syndicate if the funds are right. But, um, yeah, I think it's just a pretty, oh, almost a poor move. I know every developer does it, and there's always this, that, and the other trying to expand on what they're already giving you with the initial purchase. But I think in this case, I think it's just a little rich for Ubisoft to be announcing their, their DLC that they plan on bringing out. How about you make sure the game works? With an untested game. That, that, that's exactly that's my point. With an untested game, Unity did hurt. And it hurt them. I'm sure it hurt them. They, what, the shit that they had to give away, I was about to say the Taken King. It's something, something King. Yeah. There you go. Mm. And I, I still, I'm, I'm still hurt by it. I can't bring myself to... I don't even think I can bring myself to, to Syndicate. That, those Assassin's Creed 2.5 uh, side-scrolling games. The China one, Assassin's Creed Chronicle. Yeah. Where are the other two? Yeah. Yeah, there were supposed to, supposed to be some more coming out. I don't know what their go is. They don't even tell and, us anything. Yeah, and that was the DLC to finish off the season pass for Unity. A la Watch Dogs were meant to get a second map. You know, New Jersey was, was on the cards to be a second piece of DLC for Watch Dogs. But was that That's a rumour or was that, tr was that from Ubisoft? Yeah, we, we, we covered it a good 12 months ago in the news. Yeah, I do remember right. talking about it. I can't remember exactly where that came from, but, yeah, I don't know. They, they... Regardless of anything, they, they they charged $39 for season pass and they released a twenty two ninety five add-on, which is full retail for the yeah. add-on. Yeah. With the blood money or whatever. Yeah, so I don't know. Ubisoft and their DLC at the moment is, yeah, probably questionable. So I don't think it's probably the right time for them to be advertising it when they should push a little bit more on the Syndicate front. Well, mm. let's just hope that they redeem themselves with Syndicate. I'd, I'd I, 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 I'm with you there too. Yeah, I, I would so. love for them to get back on the wagon because they're good games generally. So, anyway. All right, that's just, the end of the yeah. uh, end of the news. So let's just uh, quickly before we move on, there was one bit that I, I think that we need to just talk about just a little bit. Uh, mm. Black Ops 3 has been given an R18 rating in Australia. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, it, it's just not really going to stop. <laughs> Did you say your, your 12 is getting a hold of it because the parents will just buy it anyway. But the, the reasons given behind it is it's got strong impact themes, high impact violence, moderate impact language, uh, mild impact drug use, and... Funny thing is, it's got no nudity, but moderate impact sex. Mm, references so, or scenes? That's... I think it's it's references, but yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think kids should be reportable. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm all for R18. I'm, I tend to appreciate an R18 game a little bit more because of the... that you've kind of taken off the, the constraints of... Uh, like an MA, you can go just that little bit more violent or a little bit more like the adult themes. The adult themes we're getting from Phantom Pain at the moment, you know, I sit there, that's R-rated, I'm looking at it now, and going, oh, fuck, you really just done that? Oh, wow. You'll get there and you'll go, no fucking way, in the next couple of weeks playing it. And 
I, I felt it led to a, a little bit more of a fulfilling experience overall because you have these moments of success and you're making moral choices and all of a sudden the game throws you this curveball where you've just got no choice but to play yeah. through the story and you go, fuck, that's, that's hard hitting. But I appreciated that. I, I didn't feel dirty and I didn't feel anything like that so yeah bring it on because it well you're shooting people it, it's typically a violent environment and um yeah but as you said it won't stop the parents from buying their kids the game but um hopefully it's a deterrent to some yeah. extent luke all for it for what for it being a r18 yeah i don't care yeah you the, the only thing, the only reason why it's R18 is because of the uh, the exploding body parts that come apart, yeah. stuff like that. Well, that's but, uh, the thing in this now. They said that the multiplayer is going to have detachable limbs. So yeah, I oh, think that's the only reason. Up. Yeah, that's that's it. Uh, and it, no, it won't make any difference to the kids playing it. And I don't care because I don't. I chat with my friends when I'm playing, so I don't hear them anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. don't, don't care. Yeah, well, that's it. All right, let's uh, move on to this week's What's That Sound? Mm-hmm. I think it's time we stop, children. What's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. All right, last week I made a, a compilation. Now, you guys got most of them, but not... I think you missed out on the last one. I think that was all you didn't get. Uh, have a listen to, to that one. I can I can do a improv of one of them. Hey. Oh. <laughs> is that good? Alright, here it is here. Have, have a listen to last week's What's That Sound compilation. Hey. All right, and those were the first one was the PlayStation 2 startup. The next one was the Ubisoft logo. Uh, one after that was the Xbox 360 startup sound. Then it was EA Sports, and the last one was the Activision startup logo. So that were the five ones. There it was pretty pretty tricky to get all of them. But uh, we'll go back to an easy one for this week. You guys might appreciate this one, and I expect you both to get it, or you're sacked. And I watched a video with that on it today. Mm, so, Red, you know what it is? Yep. Sean, do you know what it is? Uh, it's a handheld device. Means... What, what a is. vibrator? A dildo? <laughs> yeah. or... It's the iDroid. <laughs> Sacked. <Right>? Fired. Sacked. <laughs> Where's the red button? It's red button. Nah. Type, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the iDroid would be the uh, the prototype, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, well, it would be, yeah. Uh, fucking mind blown. But yeah. Fail. All right, I'm going to play it again. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Yeah. If anyone not, not... at home knows what that sound is, send us a message to the Facebook page and give us the answer. We'll send you out a free game if you get it correct. If not, you can go and hang out with Sean in the... Ooh, politically Map of correct. Everything. <laughs> I was going to use words that aren't very nice. Uh, in the, you can just hang out with Sean. That's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's belittling on its own. Yeah, that's it. Oh. All right, let's, oh. let's, oh. let's, let's move on to Gaming scene. University. Yeah, boy. <laughs> All right, this week's Gaming University, get ready to get schooled on a mixed bag. So it's going to be a whole bunch of different stuffs. The first one, starting with the characters of Street Fighter 2. I found this quite interesting. Have a gander. A couple of the boss characters in Street Fighter 2 have had their names switched around from the Japanese version. Balrog, the boxer, was originally known as M. Bison, with the M ah. standing for... 
Mike. Oh, wow. Iron Mike. Mike. Mike Bison, the boxer. Mike Tyson, uh, Iron Mike, yep. <laughs> yeah, get it? All I can cool. think of is the Balrog that took Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings. Uh, so anyway, Balrog <laughs> is supposed to be a, a the parody of Mike Tyson, but due to fear of legal issues in America, they decided to change his name. The original name of American Vega was Balrog, and the original name of American M. Bison was Vega. So instead of changing the names entirely, Capcom just switched them around because uh, I guess they like their names or whatever. Uh, that's it. It's all to um, to stop themselves from getting their asses sued. So how about that? Uh, next one is Metroid, Samus's Morph Ball. Have you guys played the Metroid games, the original ones? No. If you have seen some videos at least you'll see when yes. when samus gets uh to to like crouch down and go under things instead of crawling she roll turns into a ball yes which is known as a morph ball the reason why they made that was because they couldn't work out how to animate her crawling <laughs> fair call yeah <laughs> just, just change a pixel here or there They're like oh just fuck it make her into a ball that'll work we'll make a roll <laughs> Which is a shame, because that ass would have been nice on all fours. <laughs> so the it, same thing they did with Sonic. Uh, you Probably. Who knows? Could have but, make him, uh, animate him running that fast, so they said, oh, I'll put him in a ball. Be right. But yeah, so she was for, uh, later given a crawling animation in Metroid Zero, um, which is sort of a bit of an homage to the original plan that they tried to do but couldn't. So no, next up, number three, is E.T. the worst game ever? So the famous, awful E.T. game on the Atari 2600 actually sold more than its most famous game, Space Invaders. So, uh, oh, wow. Is that something to learn? E.T. sold 1.5 million, while Space Invaders only sold 1 million. So that's half a million more. But you know why? That's probably the hype of the game, because E.T. Yeah. E. was such a big movie that people probably bought it day one just based on that alone, not knowing that it was a terrible game. But there you go, sold more than Space Invaders, which was one of the most popular games on the Atari 2600. Number four, look my, my hands. Look closely at Ryu's fireball in Street Fighter 2. You can see his hands. Did you know that? No. Now I'm having a look. <laughs> yeah, have a look. I implore everyone to have a look. I had no idea, but if you have a look at his uh, his fireball or his Hadouken or whatever it was called, he puts his hands out, as you can imagine, and the fireball comes off, and inside the fireball, the actual design of the fireball is his hands. It's sort of got a, like a, a an image in the middle of it, so that's pretty neat. Yeah. Sure you can. Yeah. <laughs> And next up, number five, Accurate Assassin's Creed. I, I didn't re I knew there was some sort of uh, accuracy to the Assassin's Creed games, but in Assassin's Creed, every key character that you assassinate was a real person. I knew that. And the date and their location of their death is also accurate. That's pretty neat. That I didn't know. Yeah. Now, I knew that they... they put a lot of uh, fictional stuff in there but uh, I didn't realise to that sort of extent which is pretty neat there uh, next one I've got here, number 6 go to bed you little shits, it's illegal <laughs> for kids that are 16 and under in South Korea to play video games past midnight it's think, illegal, oh well yeah I think you can't, you're not allowed to get them wet and you can't feed them either <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there you go. There's a, a rule in South Korea that they're not allowed to play video games after midnight. So, uh, yeah, go to bed, you little shits. Number seven, a mouthful of words. Yoshi from Super Mario Brothers. Who knows his full name? No. Sean, uh, you're, you're a big Nintendo fan. Yoshi, <laughs> Yoshi Turtledge. <laughs> you know what? That's not a ridiculous guess. <laughs> That's probably more reasonable than the real answer. His full name is T. Yoshi Saw Muncha Coopers. <laughs> but that just asks, asks more questions. What does the T stand for? Thaddeus. Turtledge. <laughs> what? Turtledge. 
Turtledge. <laughs> right <laughs> And that was so in an Nintendo Yoshi character. Yoshi Turtledge. Just a tease at the start. It's, it's, the it's actually... Look it up. Google it. Oh, are you for real? Yeah. No, you're making that up. <laughs> yeah, you're Better making Google that up. It. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number eight. You, you sick bastards. The Necromorphs in Dead Space were designed after the developers studied photos of people after violent car accidents. Oh, wow. That's disgusting. Kind of like that. <laughs> Missing limbs, <laughs> half their faces hanging off, stuff like that. That's where they got their ideas to design the necromorphs. They're the alien-looking things in Dead Space. Wow. That's full-on, man. That That is full-on. You hear actors really taking on their part and like Heath Ledger getting right into the Joker's mind and shit like that. That That's fucked up on a wicked level. I oh, know, that's disgusting. I could imagine wanting to... And they'd have to, like, full look at it, too, to get the design. Oh, and yeah. Stuff. Oh, they'd be... Uh, yuck. Dedication, anyway. I like it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Good on them. I'd love a new Dead Space for the these new consoles we got. I reckon that'd go off. Hashtag fuck you. Fuck yeah, yeah. Right, that's it. That's all I got. That's the mixed bag uh, of gaming university for this week. I, I love the I love the the subject ones where you take it all from the one, especially when I'm really into the subject. But that mixed bag is cool too. Cause, yeah, we'll do yeah. that every now and then. Yep, nice. I like it. Oh, well, that just so, leaves us to one last thing. Red, were you about to say something first? Ah, uh, no. It was just just more more um, praise oh, for. All right. <laughs> I'm Go actually ahead. looking at what does the, the T in Yoshi's name stand for, because we're still going on that. And <laughs> there's a, a poll on one of the pages, and the Yoshi stands for uh, the. Oh, the T stands the highest for? one is Tyrannosaurus. Tyrannosaurus Yoshi, yeah. And uh, 13% went to Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac. <laughs> Tupac, Yoshi saw much Coopers. Yeah, that makes <laughs> heaps of sense. All right, very good. I'm glad we got that clarified. Thank you very much, Sean. And Red, yeah. what are we doing? Ah, uh, shout, man. It's time to hit them back with a bit of respect like they give us. Shout! Shout! Hit it all Basically, it's just general inclusion. There's no for the first four. There's nothing that really popped out this week. Not saying that's a bad thing. It's just it's uh, consistency, and I appreciate it. So this week, a big shout out goes to Nick Aaron. Rusky Big Musk, you can't have a shout without your brother. Um, Aiden Stewart, Matt Turvey, once again, okay, Bad Religions, getting amongst it. And also, a big shout-out to Ben Martin. Congratulations on your headset. Uh, we've heard it working, and we've seen it set up, and, um, yeah, we're glad you appreciate it. You've had uh, nothing but high praise for us since, so I do appreciate it. Good on you, man. Congratulations. Enjoy. They're a really good set of headphones. You, I swear, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear characters fart. You didn't even know they did. <laughs> you'll actually be able to hear in what distance and whereabouts in the room they actually did part exactly you'll pinpoint it you go oh yeah, that was upstairs room on the left <laughs> yeah. farting in the kitchen you dirty bastard <laughs> <laughs> yeah no when I tried out those headset that, that set of head, headphones man oh, I didn't realise that those sounds existed some of them it really does pick up on a, on a wide spectrum of sounds really good mm. And you get the ambient noises. Were you using them during the beta? The Black Ops beta, Look. No. Oh, that was before then, wasn't it? Yeah, duh, that's been... Yeah, shut up, Red. That would have been interesting to get your thoughts on that. All right, uh, I, think, I think that's the end of the show, man. Well, now that we're at the end of this week's show, please go head on over to our website, www.ozzygamersexpress.com. We've got heaps of news and reviews and thought pieces and all that kind of stuff up there. Subscribe, use Feedly, get it all on there, leave comments. Uh, it's really appreciated. Share the stuff with your friends if you think the, the review is interesting. Uh, while you're there, head on over to our Facebook page as well, www.facebook.com slash AussieGamers2012. Uh, or just search AussieGamers Express up in the little search bar at the top. Twitter at AussieGamers12 is the ones you want to follow if you want to hear all of our 
uh, tweets and all that kind of stuff. Retweet with your friends and favourite things and all that kind of stuff on there. Uh, Aussie Gamers TV at twitch.tv is where you can find our latest gaming raging sessions on there. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio uh, three apps that you can use to download this podcast directly to the device of your choice. This is probably the best way to listen to the podcast. It saves your spot, downloads automatically through the Wi-Fi every week when we go live, all that kind of stuff. Uh, YouTube, search Aussie Gamers Express up in the search bar and you'll get all our latest videos and uh, funny gaming bits and our podcast is also there on YouTube as well if that's a preferable way of watching things or listening to this podcast. Uh, PO Box 130, Cranebrook, New South Wales 2749 is where you can send all your snail mail to and that's about it. Nice, that's it, that's the show, done and dusted. Done and dusted. What's the plan? What are you guys going to do now? I'm going to bed. I, I have to, to give bed. a guitar lesson in about 45 minutes. Mm. And then I'm back on. You know what? Bang. I bet that person that you're teaching how to play guitar, you're their hero. Yeah, well, he's only 13, so probably because he walks in and he sees my setup and tries to talk to me about GTA. And I'm like... Mm. I hate you, yeah. Um, <laughs> At the moment. I, I didn't I actually mean that. I was just making a gaming reference. He probably thinks, fucking make me awesome like a superstar, like Joe Satriani right now, you red-headed freaky man. <laughs> Earn your you know money. I, I, I sent him home with homework the other day. You it was uh, Guitar Hero Metallica, Guitar Hero Aerosmith, Guitar Hero 5, and a guitar for the Wii. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? That's, Send him home with homework. I said, here, this will get your fingers moving. Oh, you quick. gave go, them to him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, those isn't games. That, go isn't get amongst this. That, isn't playing that going to breed a bad habit for guitar? Yes and no. Long story short, no, because what he, does, what he does struggle with at the moment is using his pinky. And if you play it on hard, on old oh, medium even, sorry, on um, Guitar Hero, it incorporates the pinky finger. That's, I, that's where I, I was trying to get to. Can't do it at all. <laughs> just just not right <laughs> I can do it on guitar I can do it playing an actual guitar I can't play it on Guitar Hero absolutely not only the three buttons uh, for me you can oh, uh, use three fingers it's mm, all that fit yeah. oh sorry guitar uh, <laughs> on the fret on the fretboard fretboard oh that was fun Toby misses I said hi alright we better go I've been Luke <laughs> One what did you say? nothing I've been Luke One I've been Thorncliffe. I've been red. <laughs> what did you say? Red in the face. Red in the face.